the college football playoff. Uh, they're announced on Tuesday, Tennessee, not a factor as we didn't think that they would be anywhere close to like last year, but would they have been a factor in a 12 team playoff? Um, would, who would you root for this upcoming weekend? Uh, Caleb, where was Tennessee on the college football playoff ranking? Tennessee was number 21. There'd be no fact. There'd be no path for them to a 12 team playoff. Yeah. Um, Unless, I mean, like the Georgia Dome would have to fall in. Alabama and uh, Georgia would both say we're not able to go to the, the college. I mean, there's no real way. But um, who, who are your Ole Miss would have teams? to back out because the college football playoff has black players. I'm sorry. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, the, the, when I look at this college football playoff, I'm going to say that I still think Michigan is is the best team. I've been saying that for a couple weeks. And you admittedly said, and you're right, they haven't played anybody yet. And you were right. But I've thought I changed just, my tune on that. Yeah. But I just thought I test. I thought Michigan was the best team. And it seems as if this whole NCAA scandal is helping them. Maybe that's what Josh Heupel needed to do at the end of the year. Send some goober analyst like the, the guy at Michigan to scout out other teams. Maybe that was the key because if you talk to Jim Harbaugh, it's like one incredibly positive. I watched his press conference yesterday. So he's back now because it was just for regular season games. And now we're into the postseason. And he said, who has it better than us? Nobody. And he's just all fired up. So is there a situation in which an off field issue can galvanize a team? I'm trying to rack my brain. Has that happened in, in Tennessee football history, do you remember yeah. one? Well, the reverse has happened, and I think the reverse could happen to Michigan. Are we sure Michigan doesn't have, and Tennessee knows this way too well, are we sure Michigan doesn't have two head coaches right now? See, you like the guy who, you like the offensive line coach way more than me. I mean, I don't know. No, the offensive, sure. he's the offensive coordinator. Offensive what coordinator. I'm saying is this is this but is he a was an offensive to, line coach. He was an offensive line coach, though, right? Yes, who became an offensive coordinator. And Michigan didn't start winning at this level to go into the playoff until he was promoted to offensive coordinator. The same way Dave Johnny Majors didn't start winning until Fulmer was promoted to offensive coordinator. Now, I think you and I both agree that was more about timing because they just loaded up on talent in the late 80s, early 90s, didn't they, with the Carl Pickens? Uh, yeah, but don't sell Phillip short of coaching them up, man. He took a lot of dudes that when I first saw that I thought had raw athletic ability – that I didn't, I didn't think would be key contributors because they look very, very raw. He took defensive linemen and turned them into offensive linemen. Uh, Fred Weary is a, a great line example. Coach. Yeah, but I'm talking in the early 90s. There was no needing, there was no coaching of Alvin Harper. You didn't have to coach him. Oh, I meant specifically, <laughs> I, I think Philip Fulmer has made every offensive line he's been around considerably better. Well, yeah, Fulmer is a line coach, but he was already a line coach before he was promoted to offensive coordinator at Tennessee. Right. Just like Sharon Moore was a line coach before he was promoted to offensive coordinator. Right. And so what I'm, so now, what yeah, I'm I seeing see, is, I see the parallels you're drawing. And also Jim Harbaugh was kind of Michigan's Johnny Majors, former player coming home, beloved is out. This other guy wins against their key rivals in Ohio state and Penn state. The same way Fulmer beats Georgia and Florida. Jim Harbaugh comes back. I'm just saying we don't know if this splits the team at all, particularly because, Dave, we already know this. Also, another similarity, just like Jim Harbaugh, Johnny Majors, both rough to work with. Yeah, I was told and by a And there's a lot of people I, that didn't like them. Uh, two names I was told by a scout recently. He said the, the head coach nobody wanted to work for that he's ever talked to in his life. One was Johnny Majors, who, you know, I don't care that somebody says that. I love him to death. He's a guy called Coach, the only one. And the other, you want to guess? Was it Harbaugh? No, it was Lou Holtz. Oh, I can see that. Nobody wanted to coach for him. Like, that that was when you had no other offers. And you went to coach for Lou Holtz and and, and Johnny Majors, according to this guy. Um, That being said, um, when when I look at this college football playoff, I do not see – the huge monstrous distinction that I've seen in the past with usually in Alabama or Georgia being way better than everybody else. I think we're going to see close games. I think when 12 teams come, you're eventually going to see close games. They might have to grow into their own. And Caleb talking all this trash on Twitter about how the 12 team playoff is going to ruin the game of college football is absolutely insane. 
it'll Absolutely. make it good for us. It'll make it good for us for about five years because for five years, smaller conferences are gonna be like, I cannot wait to see my team in the playoffs. They're gonna do so. Nobody good. talks gonna, like that. And then they're gonna go to the playoff and they're gonna get draxed. And eventually, people are gonna start to realize it doesn't really matter if my team make the play, makes the playoff. They don't. They're not gonna. They're, this is not gonna be March Madness, guys. Just get used to it. It's not going to be like March Madness. Now, Dave, an interesting tidbit of the college it's football not gonna, It's going to be like the week before March Madness where, where people – I mean, imagine if Tennessee was at 12 right now, okay? And the argument was you went through an SEC schedule, but you have three losses, and somebody that went through a Pac-2 schedule has two losses. That week before is going to be tremendous. Yeah, but – okay, but then you – I'm talking about schools like, okay, what the reason people are excited about this is they think that like the two lanes and liberties are going to be really exciting now because, you know, two lane and liberty are going to get in next year. They're the top two non group of five, non power conference champions. They'll get automatic bids. So two lane fans and liberty fans will be spending the first five years really excited about getting in. And then by year six, two lane and liberty are going to consistently be losing 65 to nothing in the first round of the playoffs. See, I think and it's the opposite. I think with the transfer portal that you might see blowouts in the beginning. But I think the entire differential between the college football's elite and that next level is coming closer together. So I think it's it's the exact opposite. My very astute criticism of Caleb Calhoun's opinion brought to you by Tennessee Cider Company, <laughs> the original on cider of the, of the Smoky Mountains. Use the promo code HAT, that's HAT, to receive some free swag with your cider order. Available most anywhere in the U.S. Go to tnsidercompany.com. Use the promo code HAT at tnsidercompany.com. They bring you the daily Wait. criticism of Caleb Calhoun's opinion. Oh, well, people are always criticizing me. <laughs> people always criticize my opinion, but then no one ever comes back uh. and, like, acknowledges when I'm right. They just treat it as truth. I'm like, you guys know that I was saying this before all of y'all. Um, by the way, I said before, I said in September of this year, I said in September of this year that there's about five quarterbacks that could be better NFL draft prospects than Caleb Williams. Everybody called me crazy. Now, everybody agrees there's at least three Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., and uh, Drake May are all at least as good NFL draft prospects. And I think you and I both agree Shador Sanders is a better NFL draft prospect than Caleb Williams. So, I thought Caleb Williams was, I voted for him for the Heisman, but I thought that as an NFL prospect, he was a little bit overrated. Uh, I think yeah. that's still. I think that's still one of those. Oh, is he six foot five, two hundred and twenty pounds? Yeah, I, he's a bigger guy, bigger than the other guys. I think there's a happy medium there between Bryce Young, who's too small. He looks like somebody's little sister playing in the NFL, and not having mobility. Which I mean, Caleb Williams has, but I'm nitpicking on him. But here's yeah, what you uh, would uh, have. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you finish your thoughts. Sorry. I well, know. I was just going to look at the college football playoff ranking. So. Here are all the teams that would, would be in play and potentially need help. So let's assume Alabama and Georgia would both get in. Let's assume with a 12-team mm -hmm. playoff. Let's assume Ohio State, Michigan would both get in. Then you're, you're, you're looking at teams that are hoping for things to happen in front of them, like Alabama, um, like Missouri. I mean, that's an SEC school. Penn State, that's a big-time school. And Ole Miss uh, maybe could get into a 12-team playoff. Oklahoma looking for things to happen. LSU, Louisville, those are great storylines. We would be having the conversation from that 8-14 to 14 group who is most deserved of playing in the 12-team playoff. That's golden stuff. I just don't understand why you don't like that. Dave, there's another layer to this, though. And this is what's going to complicate it. There's three automatic bids that are going to be up to take next year, but who are all it, that will all be ranked below Louisville because based on the conferences next year, one to 14 or sorry, one to 13, excuse me, not below Louisville, below LSU, one to 13, 12 of those 13 will be in the SEC or Big Ten next year. Florida State will be the one ACC team. Okay. So that's three automatic bids. And then below that, you've got to look at like Arizona. Liberty and Tulane would be the other three automatic bids right now. So there's fewer spots to fight for than you think. Now, just this year specifically, Dave, one thing I wanted to ask you that kind of stands out to me about these rankings. All right, so Georgia, Michigan, Washington, Florida State, Oregon, Ohio State. Here's what's crazy about these rankings. Say Oregon, uh, Washington beats Oregon again. Say that happens. So Oregon drops below Ohio State. 
there is a really good chance as we're talking about this that like if Alabama beats Georgia because they're down at number eight, you can't really vault Alabama to number four. You Alabama needs help no matter what this weekend, don't they? If Alabama beats Georgia this weekend, do you move them ahead of Ohio State or Oregon? Yeah, and uh, no, and and here's a <laughs> here's a reason that I think they went from four to twelve pretty quickly is because they knew that this was going to happen. They thought that Ohio State, a Michigan, and Alabama or Georgia were going to be number five, and well, it essentially happened last year, right? Did Alabama end at five? So last uh, year, last year they had to put two teams in by default because if they wanted to, they would have had Michigan and Georgia just play for the national title, right? Because they so had you didn't, you didn't want to leave Alabama out of the party just from a television ratings and a revenue standpoint. I think that's why they went from four to hyperspace. They went full plaid, if you remember Spaceballs, and got to 12. I think that's why eight was skipped over. I think they want to include anybody that could possibly win the thing. Well, no, the reason they, the biggest reason they went to 12 is because to win the SEC fought for 12 because the SEC realizes, this is why I want to say in the SEC's defense, Everybody that says the SEC doesn't want an expanded playoff because they like how it's rigged in their favor. No, they want more of a playoff because they know that gives them more chances to win a title because they know they have the best teams. So the SEC's always wanted the expanded playoff, right, Dave? Like always, since the 2000s. I mean, Roy Kramer started the BCS to put it on track to a playoff, honestly. Well, he didn't know he was doing that. Right, but the, Mike Sly fought for a playoff. It was always it, yeah. so. People that say the SEC got preferential treatment in the BCS and it should be settled on the field. Well, the SEC was the one always fighting for it to be settled on the field. So I just want to point that out. But yeah, I think um, I told you this. I told Roy Kramer he was essentially seeding teams for the playoff, and he looked at me like I just said something bad about his wife. So yeah, he, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, he didn't mean for it to be that, but it was. I mean, but however, the other, however you look at the it. Other, the other reason it went to 12, had they done eight, they would have had like the power five conference champs plus an automatic group of five. So there would, would have only been two wild card shots. Notre Dame wasn't going to sign on for that because Notre Dame is a wild card no matter what, since they don't have a conference to win as an automatic bid. So they wanted the 12 team playoff. Slide addendum. They went from four to more, I believe, because they didn't want to leave an Alabama out. And that's what happened last year. So whether it's four to eight or four to 12, I think they wanted to get another big name team in there and they saw how things were shaking out.